G'day Andy Socialites, this is Ryan Quarrington here. You might remember me from episode 227 and from South Australian band Shatterbrain and Alkira. I'm momentarily commandeering this episode to plug Shatterbrain's debut album, Pitchfork Justice, which is out now via Wormhole Death Records. It's available for streaming wherever you stream your music, or if you're a fan of old school physical, you can pick up a CD or a vinyl along with any other band paraphernalia you can think of via our online store at shatterbrainmetal.com. Thanks for listening, over to you Andy and Larry. Hey, legends, welcome back to the Andy Social Podcast. And before we kick into this episode, I have a few bloody champions to thank. Thank you very much to Andrew from Perth, Mick G from Sydney, Ash from Deniloquin, Dan from Dapto, Rod from Rayleigh in North Carolina, Patrick from Canberra, Liam from Brisbane, Chris from Sydney, Brenda from Leeton, Tim from Canberra, James from Brisbane, Christian from Canberra, and Steve from the Gold Coast. Goldie. Thank you very much, folks. These legends are the top tier supporters on Patreon. They're part of the larger community of just absolute amazing people who support Andy Social and myself and just all the weird, dumb little things I want to do in life. So go over to patreon.com slash Andy Dowling. Support starts from only a buck a month. It's dirt cheap, set and forget. And if you want access to things such as the exclusive Patreon podcast episode, uh, a USB pass that contains the first 100 episodes of the uh, podcast plus additional bonus content, and uh, also four free t-shirts a year, brand new t-shirts. So think of Team Acronoplan and Beluga Boy, t-shirts like that. Every year I'm going to be releasing four new t-shirts and that's all part of the Patreon community. So get on over, uh, if I can't even talk English, patreon.com slash Andy Dowling. Thank you very much. Hey, episode 271 of the Andy Social Podcast is here in your ear holes. How are you doing? My guest on this episode is Jared Roberts. Jared plays in the Melbourne, I was going to say thrash, yeah, Melbourne thrash metal band, Melbourne heavy metal band, Melbourne fucking metal band, Melbourne band Desecrator. A fantastic band, a band I've loved for many years, have, uh, I'm pretty sure we played some shows together at some point. Well, at least I've been to a bunch. Who knows? I haven't seen them overseas. I saw them in a in a smoky fucking fire trap in Prague in the Czech Republic uh, a few years ago, and uh, pretty sure somewhere else. Anyway, whatever. I'm getting sidetracked. Jared is a drummer from from Desecrator, and uh, if anyone can recall, I've also had Riley from Desecrator on the podcast many moons ago, a few years ago. And I think that might have been episode, oh, fuck, I probably should have written this one down, 138 maybe. I think it was one of the 130s back in the day. Go go back and dig into the back catalog. Go and find that episode with Riley. Go and listen to all the other episodes. But anyway, I'm getting going off on a tangent. I'm getting distracted by my own thoughts. This episode's all about Jared. Jared's a drummer from Desecrator, and uh, this is a fantastic chat. Um, this is the first time I've had a a lengthy chat with uh, Jared, and to do it on the podcast has been absolutely fantastic. Really enjoyed this chat. We talk about the last twelve months, uh, obviously with uh, with all the bands around the world dealing with uh, COVID, but a really unique story with these guys, where they've basically been sitting on an album for a long time. And they're ready to unleash it very soon. Fingers crossed. They've got a whole bunch of stuff on the go. They've got the uh, anniversary, the 10-year anniversary of Live Till Death, uh, which is being released, uh, remastered for vinyl. You can go to desecrated.net, go to the store there and uh, pre-order or order the vinyl. I'll have links and everything in the show notes over at andysocial.net, andydowling.net. I'll have Jared's social media handles, desecrated links. I'll have YouTube video clips. I'll have the works. I'll have the lot, your dog, in the episodes. So enough crapping on from me. Please enjoy this great chat. Sorry for calling you a dog, by the way. Please enjoy this great chat with Jared from Desecrator. What kind of software do you engineer? Right. Okay. Interesting. So, <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, it's an interesting uh it's an interesting title i guess maybe uh some of my public profiles have that sort of stuff linked in or something like that mm. um yeah it's actually just one of those it titles that means something but don't mean anything at the same time <laughs> i think as it people you know we we um either are assigned these strange titles or we give them to ourselves. This one was assigned to me. So truthfully, I don't really engineer any software. Um, I don't think it's probably the right title, but I am a consultant of sorts. 
Oh, so there you go. I have, yeah. So it's like it's it, it's hard to describe what what that title means in my day job. It's uh, I sometimes do anything from pre-sales, so I help sellers sell software, but also I have technical expertise in various systems that are usually on like commercial, industrial, that sort of um, um, you know, and, and collaboration and that sort of software. So you know usually larger companies or, 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 you know, that sort of thing. But when it boils down to it, if I have to do an elevator pitch, oh, so what do you do for your day job? I just say, hey, I just, I invented Skynet. <laughs> That's it. Perfect. <laughs> it's been a bit of a, it's, it, it's a bit of a running joke, I guess, within my group of friends or within the band as well. Because they're the same. It's like, what do you actually do for your day job? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I sell stuff. Sometimes I help customers do technical things i don't know skynet that's all you need to know well um, <laughs> i love it I, I think one thing i'm always fascinated about with a lot of a lot of mates and and people i've played you know alongside on stage in bands and things like that is that we never really i mean yeah sometimes we get a bit loose at the end of the night and we're talking about random stuff but you don't really sort of hear the day-to-day and i think we all sort of shy away from it because we want that profile of being you know the metal guy in the band and we're touring and all this sort of stuff but I've been so fascinated with what people do and why when I discover these things, it makes sense when I know a little bit more about their personality or what role they play in the band. And yep. it's interesting just hearing you just say that because, I mean, obviously I don't know the details of your day-to-day work, but just even from a sales point of view and having a bit of a tech yep. head as well, no yep. doubt those yep. skills would have just become really handy in Desecrator Absolutely. over the past several years. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, they do. Um, I think, you know, like I said, my, I guess I'm, I'm lucky enough that my job is pretty varied. My day job is pretty varied. So sometimes I do do something close to software engineering. I do write code very badly sometimes. Um, and I get, you know, probably snickered and laughed at by colleagues who are code writers because <laughs> I'm terribly terrible at it. Um, but um, I'm, you know, I, I guess I'm lucky enough also because I cover a lot of those things in the day job. You know, I do a bit of sales, do a bit of technical consulting, dealing with people. Um, you know, sometimes I do a bit of, you know, graphic design. Sometimes I do a little bit of marketing and do a bit of this and that. Um, it it does translate pretty well mm. um, into the into the back end of managing a band. Um, and I guess for Desecrator, um, I'm pretty active in the management of the back end of the band. Um, I do manage most of the media side. Um, we sort of collaborate on content and Riley, our front man, you know, filters and drives the, the language of the content and things like that. But all of the structure of it um, is pretty well handled by me. Um, I do our website. I handle our merch store. Um, so I do most of the graphic design on anything to do with Desecrator that's put out. Um, I probably either have a hand in it or I do it myself. Um, and I think, you know, again, because of the skills of the day job, um, you know, I get under the hood a little bit of the, you know, the social media stuff. I look at the data and what's working and what doesn't work. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, those things translate pretty well um, across, you know, across the uh, the serious side to the heavy metal. <laughs> so, yeah. I love it. I reckon it's so good. And, I mean, for years, yeah. especially sort of my early days of playing in bands and having that split identity of, you know, working a an office job or whatever job I had at the time and sort of keeping those worlds separate. And, and even these days, like, I still – still not, I don't make an effort but I just naturally have the separation but what I've found over the yeah. years is in the past I would be really reluctant to have the awareness of how the two worlds can actually complement each other and then over time I've mm -hmm. sort of looked back and gone actually you know my my working life has actually benefited quite a bit from being in in Lord, but also Lord's yep. benefited from all the skills that I've built and, and sort of harnessed over the years of working various jobs as well. So when I hear people Absolutely. talking about their, their employment, I mean, I think years ago, because of the way that 
you know, we always idolized and worshipped these, you know, metal gods and rock stars and things like that. They were always reluctant to show that other side of us. And yep, I just think exactly. um, these days we're so multidimensional, multi-skill set. It's, uh, I think mm -hmm. it's such an awesome thing to celebrate. So it's, it's interesting Absolutely. just to learn another story. Yeah. And I think, you know, I mean, uh, like I was saying before, part of my day job is sales. So sometimes I do uh, demos, you know, software demos and presentations. And, like one, and one fundamental skill that you bring, you know, to that job is the ability to get up in front of people and have an audience. So, you know, some of the, you know, when, what's that saying that, you know, the, the top five or top three things that people are scared of and, you know, death is not even in the top five, it's public speaking, <laughs> yeah, right? right? So, you, you know, so one of the things you bring to the table straight away in that, in the in, in your day job is the ability to get up in front of people and speak and you know command a room or or speak to a room um, because it's second nature to people like us so mm -hmm. we can we can just do it right um, and you know also you know dealing with people uh, short term transactions when you're dealing with customers things like that you know when you're out there playing shows and you're dealing with you know fans of your music or talking to people and talking to people after show talking to people at merch desk you know you've got you, you start to d develop that skill of the uh of the vernacular you know you have these short interchanges where you know it's everything's very exciting they're telling you you know you had a great set and i'd like to buy some of your stuff so and you're always you know we're always kind of just looking you know looking for a sale you know if you're at the merch stand and, and someone's <laughs> and someone's someone's come up to you say i love your music you know yeah play great played a great set you know you've got these short exchanges but you know you want to sell as well but you're not you know and it's not just about selling the product that's sitting behind you on the display it's it's selling the continuation you know of the of their uh you know commitment to your band or or you know their fandom of your of your group you know so um, oh, you're speaking, you know, all, all you're speaking those, my language, mate. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh I, it's, I it's all of those stuff. skills, and I guess, <laughs> and I guess you know, uh, I guess you know uh, uh, Riley from Desecrator. Mm. I don't, you know, I don't think there's actually a better salesman oh, yeah. uh, around for a band. You know, he he lives and breathes our band. He's a great salesman in all respects for the band in that in that sense you know he's he's selling it to you when he's talking to you he's selling it to you when you talk to him at the merch stand and hell yeah he's selling it to you on stage right mm. so um i think you just you you can't take that away from someone like him um and you know a lot of a lot of bands are like that too they're just you know they just that's all of those skills that you develop in everyday life translate to the stage or translate to the band world and vice versa so it's pretty interesting. It, it is. I, I mean, I I absolutely lap this stuff up. I I'm obsessed with just finding little tips and tricks and skills and things to develop mm -hmm. in my own sort of life, but find them from unorthodox places. Um, I think yeah. you know when if you think about the stereotypical band and you know a metal band, and so you're coming up through the ranks and you're playing with different bands in your local area, then you might get a chance to go into city, into state, and mm -hmm. really. You know, stereotypically, you might be just be looking at your peers that are doing the same thing as you. So you're learning all the ropes of just, you know, organizing shows and get up on stage yep. and the coordination and watching your peers play and all that sort of stuff. But then I think the bands that really sort of have that point of difference and really start to do bigger and better things are the guys who sort of, and, and girls who bring in these, um, these skills and these points of differences from completely different places, like different industries mm -hmm. or yep. you know, to start with, it would be different genres of music, which usually gives a, a little bit of a fresh take on, on a, an approach, but then yep. it could be just completely outside the music industry altogether. And I think it doesn't even mm -hmm. like from a music fan, you won't even notice it. You'll just be like, this is no. cool. Like, I love what this band's doing. You won't know what the mechanics are like, what's going on under the hood, as you said before. And, yep. um, I'm always like, I'm, I'm, my, my face is in books. I'm listening to podcasts. I'm always listening to things that I would not normally associate myself with just in the, just in the event that I might find some little nugget and go, Oh, okay. I'm going to yep. run with that. Absolutely. Yep. And we do the same thing. And I think we, um, 
we also like to share you know we always like we always like to turn it around share our own experiences as well um you know everyone in our band does that riley does that when he talks to other people um you know because they all gravitate towards the front man you know as people do um but he's very but he's also very good at sharing you know sharing our experiences hey this worked for us this didn't work for us um this is what we learned doing a b c d um so and yeah we do the same thing we follow you know um we follow podcasts we follow you know i i read i read a lot online about you know just about what's working in you know the social media uh area um yeah listen to podcasts about how others do it Mm. you know um it's pretty easy to get bogged down in what's what's the other metal band doing or what's what's the other thrash band doing whereas um yeah, I, I listen to a lot of different sources of that just because, you know, it's like, well, how is this rock band doing it or this pop band doing it or something like that, you know? Oh, that's a great idea. And especially when I look at things like um, updating my our website, like just create a website and mm-hmm. things like that, I, I go and look at all of these other bands in different genres and I'm like, oh, what are they doing on their website? What's, you know, what's looking cool or what's flowing well and all that sort of stuff. So, you know just uh always uh you always got to keep learning don't you oh you do you do i mean yeah and i think it's just for me it's always scratches the niche of being stimulated by something and having the thrill of just l- being surprised and going like that little mm-hmm. element of wonder and going oh shit i've just connected the dots i've just had that little that little light bulb moment just uh flicker above yep. my head and i go oh oh finally that thing that uh, someone's been telling me about years and years or over the years or you know, something I've read years ago has finally sort of made sense. It's just fallen into place. The puzzle, yeah. the piece of the puzzle is fit and it's, uh, yep. it's an inc- incredibly cool feeling. And, uh, and yep. for me, it's very addictive because I'm always just searching yeah. for that same feeling. Yeah, exactly. And also, you know, debunking the things that you think are really good or really working and, you know, they're clearly not. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it can, you know, put you on different courses to, to get things done in different ways. Um, you know, I think... Uh, you know, from both the perspective of what's happened with, you know, the pandemic at the moment, but also just the um, the music industry in general over the last, you know, five to 10 to 20 years, you know, obviously that game of, you know, growing a band has changed dramatically, but mm-hmm. continues to change, I guess, through the pandemic. Um, so, you know, a lot of momentum that was built in a lot of areas, a lot of bands, a lot of things that you're going to do, especially in the last year and a half, have, have kind of gone away. So it's, you know, we were already on a super, you know, seismic shift of how do we grow a band now when, you know, our biggest source of income were CDs and <laughs> and vinyl and, and things like that. Uh, you know, how do we do that now that, you know, we might not even press a CD now for the next next record. Um, so it's about streaming, you know, how do we how do we do that now? And then all of a sudden pandemic hits and oh, OK, well, those plans we had of putting out the record and going to tour next year are now not happening. So <laughs> now what do we do? <laughs> so, um, you know, the the that then has thrown another curveball in it again, you know, apart from all of those seismic shifts that were happening, it kind of has ducked sideways again. So it's, uh, you, I think you do need to always learn. Otherwise, um, you know, you might not, uh, you might not go much further. How, how have you guys collectively sort of taken in the last 12 or so months where I think the perception of the band and the way that you guys have, put yourselves out there. I mean, I think one thing in mm-hmm. sort of just reflecting back to what um, you said about sort of Riley being this natural salesman and the way that he doesn't actually have to do the hard sell. He just be, he's, he is himself and people sort of yeah. are won over. They, they get the, get yep. what he's talking about. Um, 100%. Yep. and I think a big thing about the band collectively is that you guys have got this real sort of genuine approach. It's very, there's a lot of passion around what you guys do. And there's an element of very old school, the road dog element to it. Um, The, I shouldn't use the term because it's not exactly what I want to say, but it's sort of like this no frills aspect. There's no bullshit aspect to the band, Mm -hmm. which is actually quite attractive for a lot of people and a lot of music lovers. So going into this last 12 months where you guys can't do the things that you've been known for, like this is part of your identity. Mm -hmm. That's been stripped away. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm kind of being forced, I guess, in a way, as you said before, like, you know, thinking about how you're going to release the next album, going in this yep. more tech 
reliant path. How have you guys collectively been sort of managing that and sort of adjusting to that? Has it been difficult? Has it, has it been a bit of an identity thing for you guys? I mean, it's, it just seems like a clash of worlds. Yeah, it, it is a bit like that. Um, but at the same time, we're, we're embracing it, you know. I think we, we need to uh, realise a few things. <laughs> need to realise a few things. Uh, firstly, we're all getting older. You know, um, this is in fact going to be, I believe, the, I think, we're, well, we're into the 10th year of the band. Yeah. Um, the 10th anniversary is coming up of the first album, um, which I might talk about later. Yep. Um, and, you know, I think we're, uh, we've been through a lot together over the last probably, I mean, for me, seven years since I've joined mm. the band. So, you know, I think we were already on a bit of a, okay, let's open it up a little bit. Um, let's, uh, you know, we, we, all of the things that we still fundamentally love about our band are there, right? What What is, you know, what is, we, we, we're always, well, what is Desecrator? We're a live band. That's what we do it for. Mm. We do everything else in our life and in the band to go and play on stage. We mm. just do everything to do that. So, you know, and that's come with trials and tribulations, i.e. putting out an album, which we, you know, just nearly never did, <laughs> but we did eventually. But, you know, even that was difficult because we had tours all around it and through it we were writing songs, trying to finish songs while we were in Mexico and we had two days off and we found a, you know, a, a, a attic to jam in or something like that. Um, so all of that, we kind of, you know, our, our whole... Um, uh, yeah, I guess that, you know, perception of us just being, you know, road dogs and all that sort of stuff. It's great. We love that. We want to continue to do that. However, we got to a stage where we were, I think we would like to stop <laughs> and we would like to really concentrate on putting out a good product. As in, we want to put out a collection of songs that we all really love. We want to do it. We want to take a bit of time. We don't want to rush things because, um, you know, you have lessons learned. Mm. You know, I think the lesson, we had a few lessons out of the, the, the you know, the first studio album, which was To The Gallows that we put out, um, which, you know, we, we are really, you know, happy that that album came out. Um, we love the fact that we finally got a studio record out. We love the fact that it's just raw and honest and it was, we go into the studio, we play the songs, we walk out, we slap it on vinyl cd and that's it <laughs> love it that was that was how we did it it was like you know if you want a representation of you standing right in front of desecrator while they're playing at you that's it right um we, you know with no earplugs <laughs> so <laughs> so you know we were, we were happy with the way they come out and you know but at the time it was challenging because we were like okay we've got this tour and this tour and this tour we need to go to rehearsals for you know x amount of weeks which means we've got you know 5.2 seconds to track this record right mm. um so, you know, we had some things that were rushed and I think Riley had an injured wrist at the time so he couldn't play a lot of the rhythm tracks that he wanted to and, you know, that kind of, you know, messed up the vibe of the, you know, him and I tracking the drums together and all that sort of stuff, you know, all that technical stuff. So I think at the end of that we were um, okay. Uh, and I think I was probably more vocal about it than anybody. I jumped up and down and said, right, <laughs> here's what I want out of the next record. Here's what I don't want. I don't want to rush. I don't want to, <laughs> I want to play drums to a click track. <laughs> I want to do this and that and the other, you know, <laughs> we got a bit, got a bit diva on them. But I think what happened is we went in and did a single and we mm. did a single called Manic and um, it was a, and it was actually just a purely delightful experience because we did exactly what we should do. Um, I, I, you know, we, we demoed it, Riley did all of the rhythm tracks. So his right hand was just on fire and, and we were so happy with the way that came out. And I said, well, this is how we've got to do the record. And if, if that takes us a year, it takes us a year. And it pretty much took us a year. So we didn't play many shows. We really slowed down. I think in 20, on the back half of 2018, we really slowed it down and we we're writing songs. Um, we, took our time. We did six or seven months of writing and pre-production and just demo after demo after demo after demo, which we just didn't do before, like ever, um, until we 
beat the songs into shape um, and we all were really happy with them. We all got a hand in them. I mean, you know, Riley and I do the start, you know, um, and but everyone had a hand on it, you know. Um, Andrew came in with, you know, a whole song ready to go and it was, it was fat. he wrote drums and everything and I didn't have to change anything. That was great. So we, and so we all had a hand on it as well um, and we thought, okay, let's, let's do it like that. I went in the studio and tracked the drums uh, with nobody else in the room except the engineer. <laughs> so that was a thing. Um, would have been nice to have somebody there, but they weren't. <laughs> um, it, it was just, you know, I think we did it in the work week, right? Everyone has to work. Yeah. I, went in, I went in the studio and did it. And I think all of that was building to our momentum, right? And then at the end of the day, uh, okay, let's uh, talk about getting it out. Um, and by that stage, we were looking at, pandemics and lockdowns and um we started booking tours um we had booked festivals in south america um we had a we started announcing dates in south america with heathen mm, um yeah we had um a tentative tour of europe <laughs> booked we had shows in australia so we had like a bit of a you know okay we're gonna do it um and we're all stoked with the record um and then all this hit. So it then started to all feel wrong. Um, okay, we could release the album anyway and not tour, but it's like, well, okay, well, we're, we're, we're a live band. The only way that we're going to get this out there properly is if we put it in people's hands when we're on the road. That's how we've always done it, yeah. you know. And, again, that is back to, you know, throwing back to the old way we've always done things. It's like, you know, we're not – we are a live band. We get on the road. We go and put the record in people's hands physically, <laughs> literally, you know. Um, so that's what we wanted to do. So we were like, okay, well, do we release it anyway and just see what happens? And it kind of just all felt a bit wrong. So we didn't. We sat on it. How, how, does, how did that feel? Because, I mean, I just know my, my own feelings when we – you know, slave away and, and, you know, right from day dot from slapping random riffs together and sending them via Dropbox or jamming out something in the rehearsal room yep. right to the final stages of of polishing off an album. And I, at least from, I can't talk on behalf of the other guys, but for me, I'm chomping at the bits. I can't wait for this thing yeah. to get out. So yep. to, for you guys to stop in your tracks and look at it and take a really, I mean, a really fucking mature approach. I mean, well done to, to hold back. Was that it's, a really yeah. difficult thing for you guys to do and to know yeah. that you don't know when this album's going to come out? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it was exactly that. It was pretty uncomfortable because mm. we just, I think, you know, I mean, Riley and I talk almost every day, um, or I would say almost every day mm. and have done for seven years, right? And I think we had gone through, I think to my recollection, we had gone through a dozen different ways to release the album last year, like how we going to do this you know um how are we going to do it to really because we really you know obviously like <laughs> like everybody does you know we we really uh hope and feel that the album's going to be exactly what it should be like we really want it to be wow yes this is what desecrated sh should be sounding like now you know I, i'd really like people to listen to it and go wow thank fuck, it's awesome. This is exactly what it needs to be. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't want it to go. It's, I don't want people to feel it's a regression. Like mm. I want it to feel it's a progression. Right. Mm. Mm. So, so I think we, we were, we just tried so many different ways and none of it just felt right. So we sat on it and I think sitting on it actually felt better than feeling not good about releasing it. Cause you know, we did just, we went through it all and then we despaired and then we got pumped up again and then we despaired again and then we're like, all right, we'll do it this way. And then we despaired again. And then we're just like, you know what, let's just do nothing until it feels good to do so. Um, which again is hard because we're normally a hundred miles an hour all the time. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next tour we're going on? Um, all of that. Um, so it did feel a bit strange. Um, you know, it's been the biggest break any of us have had for a long time from doing you know, anything with the band, mm. we kind of just took, we kind of just took, took it as a, as a bit of a break, really. Um, I guess during the, 
hard lockdowns. Obviously, us being in Melbourne, we we went through a pretty lengthy lockdown last yeah. year. Um, we really didn't do a whole lot. Um, we sort of took a break. Uh, we all went to work. We went back to work, and uh, we really, again, you know, Riley talked to, and I, Riley and I talked every day about how we're going to get this thing out. Um, but just it just didn't materialise into anything that we felt was right. Um, which sounds a bit silly because some, you know, it's just like, come on, man, just get it out and don't be stupid. But <laughs> it's, you know, I think, you know, like any art, you know, piece, of, like any artist, like any piece of artwork, like any passion and craft or whatever, you know, uh, it's just got to feel right, you know. And not only that, it's not just about what I want or what Riley wants. There's four of us, you know. <laughs> so um, I think which is interesting in itself because, you know, I think, uh, you know, band's been around for, you know, 10, 11 years, maybe more now. Um, and I think in the early days it was really, you know, it's, it's Riley's band. Like Riley has been there since the start. He has led, you know, he wrote all of the first batch of songs, really drove the band. And, you know, we jump, I jumped on board in 2013, you know, sort of four-ish years into the band. And, you know, we've had some, some members come and go. But I, I guess up until a few years ago, it was really, you know, subscribing to Riley's band. Like you jump in Riley's band and, and he kind of led it. But I think nowadays, I think we've, we've been established long enough that it's kind of more about all of our visions, not just his now. Um, so, you know, releasing the next record and doing the next thing, really is now a, a, a group decision. So, um, which is, you know, which is a good thing in some ways. I think it's great. Um, it definitely takes yeah. a, lot of, a lot of pressure off. Well, yeah. uh, pressure, yeah. pressure off uh, Riley, no doubt, but I think pressure off everybody where nobody has to worry about uh, eventually being in a position where you're compromising for somebody else. And I think if everyone's got like That's a... Right. Uh, a semi-equal stake in in the overall uh, the overall goal, the overall picture. Then I think that sort of helps with yep. buy-in and, and passion, and sort of just getting people yeah. to 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 work together to get to aim for something. So yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, exactly right. So I think it's 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 a a bit. I think it's a bit more like that these days. Obviously, you know, captain's call gets hap happens sometimes, as as you do, but. Um, <laughs> But I think it's actually worked out really well in the fact that, you know, as I said, you know, like we're we're all a little bit older now and we're, you know, we still have, you know, I think we're lifelong, probably much like yourself and much like everyone else. We're lifelong. We'll do this until we can't anymore. Mm. Um, so it's like, well, you know, we also want to do this and enjoy it, you know. Um, obviously, and you probably can relate to this as well, you know, not every tour has been fully enjoyable mm. you have great moments but not every moment and not every tour is enjoyable some of them are real hard some of them are real painful and some of them you know you've messed your life over a few times to do it <laughs> um so uh, so it's not always great but at the same time it's like what else what else would you be doing like yep. this is what we this is what we do you take the good with the bad um and i think as we're all getting older it's it's more about, hey, we're, we want to do this because we like like it, not because we have to, mm. um, you know. But still, you still, you are looking, f you are still looking for the next thing. I, th I think our our attitude has changed from, well, we don't, you know, the next thing is to not be more famous um, or to be bigger or better than anybody else. The next thing is to, um, you know, enjoy the touring. Um, put out songs that and music that we like and we think other people will like, you know, um, and just have an overall, you know, uh, uh, more open attitude about everything. Um, so I think that's reflect, reflected on, on the next record that we'll put out. Um, you know, there's a few thrash bangers on it, um, but there's also some stuff that's a little bit more in the, more of a heavy metal gen, gen, in the generic sense, you know, um, so, and I, and, and I guess we hope that, you know, it'll grow the band as much as anything, but it's like at the same time, it's like, this is stuff that we like. So, you know, we're not, we're really happy to put it out there and uh, jump on board. So 
that's kind of the attitude these days. Well, you you were kind to flick me a little uh, little secret link earlier on just to listen to a song, and mm-hmm. uh, certainly won't go into details of that. Um, I'll leave that to you guys to to work out when you want to talk about stuff. But um, I tell you mm-hmm. what, when you mentioned heavy metal, um, mm-hmm. there's there's elements of that particular song that you sent me where I just went, wow, um, this is there's obviously you know straight up some thrash elements in there, but there's some real just tough fucking riffs and some real sort of just, I was going to say just old school heavy metal, but it's, it's not even that it's, it's just the, there's this very sort of straight up. Oh, I'm going to have to think about how I can describe this properly because it's just, it really, it really surprised me, but in the same way, it wasn't surprising in the sense that oh, I've never heard something like this before. It was just like, fuck yes, this sounds really, really cool. And it's refreshing and in the context of what you guys are and, and what I've heard, like, you know, what's being recorded and obviously seeing you guys live, I thought this is, um, it's just, it sounds like a, a, a turning point for you guys. And obviously you guys have been sitting on this music for a long time now. So mm. you've, you've probably mm. listened to this to death, but, um, I think, mm. you know, from my years, I just listened to it and went, wow, this, uh, this sounds like a new chapter. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of what we want. I think, like I was saying before, I want this to be a progression. Like, and I think we all do. We want people to listen to it and go, "This is exactly what it needs to be. This is a good progression for these guys." Like, it, you know, want it to sound big, thick, heavy, you know. But you know, we've still got some thrashes on there, of course. You know, um, I don't think there's one song that doesn't have some fast bits on it. But um, oh, there may be one. We'll see. But um, but you know. Uh, progression that's it I, you know I, I just want people to go you know people that like already like our music i want them to go this is a great progression um and people that have never heard us before you know sing along i think that's the other that's the other thing yeah. you know it's uh it's uh it's you know tough heavy metal bit of thrash and uh, some good hooks and and sing along you know that's that's kind of what we want to well it worked i mean one mm. one playthrough one quick playthrough and the song i can still recall it in my head now so that's a that's a damn good sign yeah. so uh, yeah. very very yeah. cool man that's and, great I'm, I'm pleased to hear it and i think yeah. an interesting thing because uh, there's a couple of comments that you made and i want to sort of circle back on this because sure you're talking about you know, the way that the world's changing and, and, you know, when it comes to touring and the pandemic and all this sort of stuff. And then sort of you threw out this comment, which I don't know how married to this, this concept you are, but you were talking about how potentially the next album doesn't get released on CD at all. And you're talking about digital stuff Mm. and all that sort of, all those sort of things. And the other comment that you made was about, you know, releasing an album where, you know, the best way to get it into people's hands is at shows, you know, that's, that's how you move units. And for, yeah. for us, I mean, I, I mean, hindsight's a bitch and there's no way we could have predicted a pandemic because we put out our album in August of 2019. Uh, and in hindsight, yeah. I'm like, guys, I wish, wish somebody like some Nostradamus could have told us that a pandemic's coming. So we could just hold out and just sit on an album for another 18 months because yeah. we, we did a, a quick run around the country. Um, we sold more albums during pre-order and the run of shows, so over a, a space of a couple of months, than we ever have for any previous album. We get into the ARIA charts, which is just fucking ridiculous. I have no idea how the fuck. Yes, I think I must be that. must be a fucking quiet <laughs> month, quiet week that that week. But we got in there nonetheless. Yeah. Um, we won on the technicality, and yeah, yeah. But every tour, every album we've done in the past the the lead up to the album is always minor in comparison to what you end up flogging at shows and so for yes. us we could have sold three four five times as many units purely by just playing shows and just hustling at the merch table at the end of the night mm-hmm. and yeah. and for us like we sort of had plans to start doing shows at the beginning of last year and then obviously all the things happened and so for us we sort of i I, I think, I mean, I can't talk on behalf of the other guys, but I sort of feel in some ways where the album's out there and people can access it and enjoy it, that it just, it just didn't get what it should have got. It just, it yeah. kind of died and it was yeah. not, it wasn't wasted, but it was just like, man, we just, it just, it didn't get its, uh, it's just dessert. So it didn't get its day. No. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I'll have to do a bit of creative marketing down the track, but, but with you guys, I mean. What what is the thoughts? I mean, eventually, you know, you want to play shows that you want to play, like you want to enjoy yeah. touring and all that sort of stuff. But yeah. 
what I mean, I'm not holding to these these uh, concepts now because obviously things <laughs> will change. But I mean, what what yeah. are the thoughts that have been sort of flying around? Okay, well, we've had, I mean, like I said, we had gone through all of this, uh, you know, over and over. You know, we do. Let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Let's release it. You know, let's release it in in singles. Let's release it in bursts of three. Um, let's release it not as an album, just as a collection of songs over a year and a half. Mm. Like we'd gone through all of that and we got advice. I've got advice from um, some consultants and things like that because, you know, one thing that, you know, uh, traditionally our online presence was not strong on was on Spotify. Mm. And honestly, since, so our last record to the Gallows came out in 2017 and in 2017, those streaming platforms were kind of on par. You're talking Apple Music, Spotify, and all of that. I don't know the exact statistics, but they were a lot closer than what they are today. Mm. And then someone told me a few months ago, from then to now, Spotify is outselling the next competitor 10 to 1, which yeah. is, I think is Apple Music, right? So, so a lot has changed in that space during that time. So I looked at, you know, and I got control of our, our Spotify again after, you know, the, the expiry of, uh, of uh, you know, contracts and things like that. And I thought, wow, we need to really grow this because in 2020, 2021, um, this really matters more than it ever has, right? So, you know, there's work to do there. Um, there's work to do, you know, in all, in all parts of the of the online um, area, you know, for the band. So, you know, and so now I think the thinking at the moment is that we will do something that's in the middle. Um, I guess, you know, the fact that we did get to play a show in Melbourne, which was this, you know, we had, I think in the final days of the lockdowns and the sit down venue oh, that's right. um, yeah. approach, we got to play this show in Melbourne the, to a seated crowd, which was, uh, you know, uh, I think the concept of it was so strange to us, but I think by that stage, I think it was, had already been done a few times just around the world, you know, so mm. people kind of see how it works. We got in the room, we played the show. It was actually cracking, um, you know, people sitting down still can go fairly crazy. <laughs> um, so, but I, I think that gave us a bit, okay, well, maybe we do something that's, you know, well, let's, let's work on the online stuff and we start putting it out, you know, this year and then by maybe towards the end of this year, we'll go out and start playing. Um, obviously, the overseas touring is not going to happen for <laughs> some time. Yeah. So that is a wait and see at the moment. And I guess like we've always done, if the opportunities come our way to do it, we'll do it and assess it at the time. Um, but uh, it's, it is just a wait and see scenario. So, so that's, that's, that's what we're thinking at the moment. We will get it out this year. I think at the end of the day, by the time, uh, if we do release it this year, it'll literally be two years since we tracked it. So we we do want to get it out. It is getting to the end of our patience to sit on it. <laughs> um, but at the same time, we're also aware that, okay, if we put this album out this year, for example, and we can't go overseas and tour for another year or something like that, we're, we, we, we are also thinking, wow, maybe we should have another album ready to go by then. Mm. Um, maybe we should then go and write another one. Um, don't know. <laughs> don't know. It's very, very strange at the moment. So, um, but we do, we do want to get it out. It's, 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 uh, yeah, like you were saying before, it's the, the feeling's very strange. Um, but you know, we, we, like I said, we've cycled through many, many ideas and we'll just try our best. Um, yeah. And, and you know, getting it out last year, we did, I guess, see it a little bit that, wow, we, we shouldn't put this out while we can't go out and play it. And I think that, you know, the advice that we've got from, you know, labels and, and, and external people who help us, we're like, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe you shouldn't put it out until you can go and tour it. Um, that's the band that you are. So maybe you should just wait. I think that's a big um, thing. And I think that's why, yeah. that's why you guys have, have done well over the years in the sense that I think what's what's the right way of describing this you're not predictable but i think what you guys are it's like what you see is what you get and i think yeah. you guys need to 
I mean, he, he's been telling you what to do, but I think, I think <laughs> <laughs> but but you guys, you guys fall into like this image and this this ethos that's been pumping out of this band for so many years, and it would just, I think, it would just do yourselves a disservice if you weren't able to continue that narrative in one way or another that's consistent with what you guys have been like to do a pivot, um, a dramatic pivot that would just completely remove you from everything that you guys have built might not make a lot of sense and could end up being something that is regrettable later on. And so I think, you know, taking a little bit of extra time and I always, I mean, this is something I've I thought about the other day. It's so funny because I get so fucking restless and I've got this extra mm -hmm. le level of restlessness where obviously we had the pandemic and everything like that, but mm -hmm. we are a band that hasn't had a permanent drummer since 2012. We've had a revol yeah. we've had a spinal tap fucking revolving door of drummers over the yep. years. And after the last run of shows, uh, Adrian, who was helping us out on drums, said, look, I can't commit. I'm going to have another kid, all these sort of things. I'm like, okay, no worries. And then yep. at the same time, then the other guys in the band are sort of going, look, you know, this is getting tough, blah, blah, blah. So I can see us, I mean, we're already slowing down for a few years now, but I'm like itching more than ever to play. So yeah. I'm just sort of looking at all this going, man, like what the, what the fuck do we, do we do? But then I look back and this is, this is something just, I've had this little epiphany the other day and I'm just looking at like, I've got these stacks of CDs around me, all these vinyl and everything. And I'm looking at all these classic bands from over the years. So I'm just thinking, I don't know what the fuck, look, I'm looking at my pile now. I don't know what the fuck Blind Guardian did between 1995 and 1997, just like throwing random years out there. Um, yep. You know, a two year gap. They probably didn't, they probably played some shows. Um, they might, yep. they might've been in between albums, but who knows? Yep. They could have done fuck all. And who the fuck yep. knows in 2021? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. for us, we sort of, well, for me, I'm thinking, and probably for you guys, it's like at, the, at this point in time, you're thinking, oh my God, like what's the future hold for us? But maybe this is just yeah. a one, two year lull that ends up yep. coming back, firing all, all cylinders and you're back to where yeah. you were before, but better than ever. Yep. That's a very good point because I, I, I think uh, certainly Riley and I debate that, uh, have debated that a lot over the years about staying present versus staying in the background mm. um you know there's always i think you know years ago there was a bit of a fear of you know becoming irrelevant if you don't stay present mm. um whereas i think in the last few years i've i've argued the point is does it really matter if we don't do anything for a year and i think this is when we we're just talking about you know you know, I was like, for fuck's sake, we've got to stop playing shows at some point and write an album. <laughs> and, yeah. and like, and we could, you know, I mean, that was all kind of collectively happening. We were like, yes, we do want to do a really good album when we want to focus on it. And I think one of my strong arguments at the time was, yeah, does it doesn't really fucking matter if we don't do anything for a year, if we kind of just lay low for a year or whatever, um, and we come back with a new record, is it going to hurt us? No. Probably not. And especially given now that, you know, we're in this strange new world of ours, it probably doesn't matter so much anymore. Um, you know, everyone is just doing what they can. Um, and I think to your point before, you know, um, about, you know, the, the, the ethos of doing what we do, I can tell you right now, once the record comes out, as soon as we're able you're damn right we're doing it, you know. As soon as we can get back out there, as soon as we can tour, as soon as we can play, as soon as all of that stuff happens again, you better believe we're doing it as soon as we can. You know, much like yourself and, and a lot of others, you know, that as soon as we can, we will. Um, but I think, yeah, we're just, you know, picking our time to kind of strike with a new record just to maximise the value of it. Um, and look, if at the end of the day, you know, we're still in a... In a, in a pandemic lockdown situation and things like that, I guess we'll just have to deal with it at the time. Um, but I think one way or another, we've got to get new music out and, and just keep going. Um, because, uh, you know, I think it's time. I think, uh, you know, and, and, you know, like, you know, truthfully, we're, we're starting to get the people, you know, pe the people that like our band are starting to really get a bit like, hey, man, when's this album coming out? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, um, it's, I think it's a blend of worlds now, isn't it? Like, I mean, I think, you know, whenever we come out the other side of this, there'll be elements of the past that will, you'll see a resurgence in. And so, yeah. you know, touring and going back to shows and things like that. Mm -hmm. But 
there might be a completely new strategy with some of the other things, as we've seen over the past 10, 15, 20 years with, you know, different formats being popular of the way that we release music, et cetera. And I think just going back to what yep. you said before, where you guys get to this point where it's been two years since you tracked the album and thinking, mm-hmm. okay, well, maybe maybe we need another collection of songs ready to go. And yeah. it might be a case that in the future, the, the one of the probably one of the better ways to sort of approach all this is that you instead of the old school traditional way of you get into the studio you write you write and record your album you go out and touring cycle you come back a year and a half later then you go back into the studio and you do the whole thing again and just keep up that revolving door now it's a case of mm-hmm. you record when you can you bank those songs and then you uh and you can still release them as an album of course but um yeah. you just release yeah. them as you, you can... go but not necessarily yep, right. in that cycle Yep, exactly, and I think that's um, that forms uh, that forms a lot of the the digital platform strategies as well, because mm. um, we you know we had ideas of releasing three by three and all this sort of stuff, which you know we still think is a good idea, but is that going to work for the uh, algorithms of Spotify? Like that's that's where I was going, getting advice, and they're like, maybe that won't work for that. So we're like, okay, uh, let's think of something else, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so um, it. Uh, it, it, it's a sometimes a bit of a mystery, but you just gotta, yeah, you just gotta play your cards and see what happens. Um, and I guess that's a difficult you know, thing, isn't it? Like for you guys, yeah, just, just to work out what feels what feels right, as well as what is the right thing to do, because those two yeah, things could be two yeah. very different things. Yep, exactly right. Yep, and we, you know, I mean, look, at the end of the day, we're pretty lucky. Like uh, for the most part, we've we've been able to you know, keep working and keep ourselves going. And, um, you know, we, like I said, you know, the band's in a pretty good spot. We're all, you know, we all, you know, we have, we have Andrew from Harlot playing guitar for us these days. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, And, you know, he's very much, he's very much on the level like us. Um, You know, he's, he's, he's just got the combination of, you know, been there and done it a few times. He's in his own successful band. He likes playing with us because, you know, it's a, it's a nice thing for him to just play guitar in a band and not have to, you know, run and sing and do all of the things in a band. So he kind of likes it from his perspective. But for us, it's great because, you know, he's a hell of a guitar player. Like he can, can really play, you know, lead guitar really well. Um, you know, he's got a good touring head and all of that sort of stuff, but he's got, he's got a really good perspective because he's an incredible songwriter. Um, so he's got a good perspective. He sees us from the outside like nobody else has. Um, so it's it's kind of a good melting pot of all of us now. Um, so we're all, you know, we're all in a pretty good spot. We've been lucky that we've been able to keep going um, and kind of regroup. Um, I certainly, I mean, much like you, I was by the end of last year and we hadn't seen each other or anything for six months. Mm. I was absolutely itching to play. And I kind of realised, you know, you go through those, you go through those uh, waves of, you know, when you're out on the road, you're having a shit time. Jeez, I want to go home. Oh, geez, I can't <laughs> wait to get in my own bed. But, you know, you, you stay at home a few months and then you're like, man, I cannot wait to get on the road. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, spontaneously combust if I don't get out and tour and, <laughs> and do what we normally do, you know. And I, I reckon f- for me, and I, I guess like to what you were saying before about just being so itchy, I think by the end of the, our really hard lockdown, I, yeah, I personally really realized that. You know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do Desecrator and everything for as long as I can. For as long as the, the ride happens, I'm in it because, you know, um, when it's kind of taken away from you in that way, um, you know, just in the fact that we had things to do, we had things booked, we had a momentum going of things. And when, you know, things out of your control take it away, much like everybody else, you know, and like I said, we're lucky because from a from an employment perspective and all of that we work our jobs and we were you know mostly unaffected not completely unaffected but mostly unaffected um you know we weren't in that group of people in the entertainment industry who lost employment Mm. and all of that you know we we were lucky we just lost our gig but that didn't mean we lose our livelihoods or things like that but at the same time it's like you know go through go through a bit of a, a small identity crisis like oh man i'm i'm now i've been mr it guy for too long i, I need to get back on the road <laughs> you know um and, and you know we 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 had built up such a good 
you know, like we, you know, like I said, with with an, being having Andrew in the band and Jerry and Riley and me, we we just we all get along so well. We're we're keen to just get on the road together and have a bit of fun. We 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 um, you know, we we developed just such a great network of people as well to help us. Um, you know, I mean, we I mean, we all do it. We've always done it kind of DIY. You know, I mean, I, you know, I love that term DIY. It's such a uh, I think I, I say it's DIY with an asterisk on it or <laughs> DIY plus because it's it's not exactly DIY. Yes, we do. There are many elements of all of our bands that do DIY, but, you know, we get help. <laughs> you know, we get, we need and we get help. Um, you know, I think I was saying before that, you know, Riley's very good at sharing his stories and our stories with other bands and sharing advice on this, that, and the other. He's like, he's pretty open like that, but in the same, you know, he also gets advice from people. And so do I, like we have help. Um, we have people helping us with our videos, our artwork. Um, you know, all of our artwork is, we, we, we channel our artwork through, you know, one or two people. Um, you know, we've had, we've had slick our sound guy with us, you know, he's he's been in the band longer than most of us have been. You know, <laughs> as our as our as our crew guy. You know, um, he does. You know, he's he, he comes on the road with us. So it's like DIY with an asterisk or DIY plus, um, because we we you know. So by the time we were ready to write this new record, we just we had that such a good group and a momentum and a big family of people helping us. And then, yeah, all of a sudden it's just off. Everything's off. Um, so yeah, it sucks, but we're also grateful that, you know, we can still keep going and we can actually bounce back at some point to, uh, to get our music out there and, and, uh, you know, go and do what we do again and, and have a bit of fun and, and get out and talk to people, um, and get out and, and have a bit of fun with people. I think everybody needs it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're looking forward to when that happens. I think, uh, I think the last, the last year or so has, well, will actually, be of great benefit to most bands. I think that, like anything, there's going to be casualties along the way where a lot of bands are just not going to not going to come back. But I think, yeah. I think a lot of a lot of bands that do come back will look at this time and realise that you can be patient, you can take your time, and as you said before, having sort of this moment going, I do want to do this for as long as I possibly can, and understanding that. Yeah. You know, there's you don't have to panic and sort of be competing against your peers because your mates are out in the road and it's like, oh, what the fuck are we doing? We're not doing anything. We're losing our momentum. And it's like, well, yeah. no, like our time will come, um, and yeah. we've just we've got our own journey, our own plan. And so I think a lot of yeah. bands are going to come out the other side of this and have a new perspective, new appreciation, and probably mm -hmm. be a little bit more a little bit more strategic and a little bit more thought out yeah. about how they approach things rather than being very impulsive or reactive to situations and probably not making the most of the opportunities as they, as they roll along. So, I mean, that's my, yeah, that's my exactly. sort of, you know, uh, optimistic sort of, uh, outlook on, on the period of time. But, um, yeah, yeah. it'd be interesting yeah. to see what happens once, once things start to start to sort of lean back into a sense of normalcy. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I hope it's sooner rather than later, but, uh, I think we've got a little way to go yet. Um, a little bit, but a little I mean, bit. You know, we're all, I think, you know, putting it all in perspective, we're pretty lucky in Australia too, I guess, with the, you know, with the uh, the pandemic and the health crisis across the world, we're, we're pretty lucky in Australia. Um, but um, at the same time, yeah, you know, uh, a lot of people are hurting, especially in our industry because of the, uh, you know, job losses event, you know, the events cancellation, the whole industry effectively shutting down. Um, but... Yeah, like you're saying, I think everyone, especially the artists that survive it, that will, um, yeah, they'll have a, a, you know, yeah, a new newfound appreciation, or at least it will, uh, yeah. It, I mean, everybody's perspective's been changed, whether they like it or not. Mm. I think so. You know, I guess it's how you uh, how you then approach it, and and I, I think like I've been saying along with, <laughs> with how do we approach it? Who knows? We've been through a hundred thousand ideas, and. Uh, uh, this is the idea now. Uh, it may change between now and when, you know, the new record comes out or we can actually tour again or who knows. Um, you know, like I said, we've been lucky to to do what we've been able to do. We've, we've made the most of opportunities and some we've been, you know, some some of it's been hit and miss, um, you know, but you learn a lot and you just try your best. And, uh, you know, uh, 
and, and it's, it all comes down to, you know, the, the, the passion of why we do it. So, um, you know, we all enjoy music. We love playing music. So that's what it's all about. Yeah. A nice reminder of, uh, of why you do it in the first place when, when it's taken yeah. away from you and, and you're forced to have to yeah. sort of sit at home on, on your hands and sort of go, oh, what am I going to do? Yeah. You realize, yeah. um, the, all those good moments and the, the bad moments are sort of, uh, I wouldn't say looked back on, uh, with uh, with fondness, but uh, you know, you sort of look back and go, well, it was all part of the bigger picture. You know, you need to it's go through the it. through yeah. the downs to enjoy the ups along the way. Yeah, but um, yeah. With... And it's all it's all in story, and it's all part of the stories. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's you it. Come, I mean, you come fuck, back and stories. it's all part of the experience. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I think when you when you are talking to you know when you're in your workplace or you're in that sort of zone, I think most people you know sometimes they glaze over when you say okay yeah I'm in a heavy metal band and sometimes it's like <laughs> oh okay you play that rah 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 shit okay cool whatever. <laughs> but usually if they get a step beyond that, it's it's always I I think people are always fascinated by your story because when you start talking about you know like the start the start of our conversation when we're talking about skills translation into both areas of your life and things like that I think once people start asking you about those things oh okay okay well you're a heavy metal band and you tour you know this country or this continent when you start talking about how that actually happens and what what actually happens and how it actually functions, you do get into that conversation about, well, this is how we make it happen and this is how glamorous it is not and this is how this, that and the other. And I think, you know, I think people are always quite fascinated by that side of, you know, that side of, of, of this, of what we do um, because it's, I think some it's, it's a human story, you know. It's not just... Oh, you play that rah 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 shit and drink and take drugs all the time. You raging bogan. Um, <laughs> it's just a human story about we're just trying to execute a passion, and this is how we do it. You know, yeah, we play on stage every night and we do this, that, and the other, and but you know, we're doing a whole lot of other stuff twenty three hours of the day <laughs> to make it happen. You know, in terms of you know marketing and managing money and merch and this, that, and the other, and try not to get fired from our jobs and all of that, all of that other stuff, and try and have families. You know, I've got kids and. All of that, so. Another dynamic altogether, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I was talking to somebody, I can't remember who it was, someone on the podcast, someone someone listening will, will, would have remembered me talking about it, but I was talking about skills transfer with people and mm. sort of, you know, the old, you know, just some of the comments that you made, like, you know, in the office place, like, oh, you play that rah-rah shit and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And, you know, the old sort of traditional sort of things that you would deal with in the workplace have shifted and changed over time i think as our generation gets into into sort of higher levels of employment and people have careers and mm -hmm. things like that i think there's a lot more acceptance of alternative lifestyles and alternative passions mm -hmm. and interests and so i've been yep. saying to a bunch of people i go man if you're if you're applying for a job and you've got to fill out your skills and and the things that you're into i mean you don't have to go and say hey i play in a heavy metal band but you can talk about you know tour manager experience band management experience yep. you know merchandising sales marketing all sales, sort of stuff and financial yep, yeah all of that yeah and you can yep, talk about exactly how that translate how that applies to whatever you're you're gunning for and yep. not everybody's going to get it but the people that you want to associate with are going to get it and they're going to see yeah. how they can apply that point of difference into whatever job you're going for and um i just think uh it i think a lot of musicians probably need to lean in hard or harder into what they've developed over the years where they, it's probably a lot of it's unconscious they don't even realize that they've got these skills but they are a natural yeah. They're a natural people person. They're a natural customer service expert with just the way that they hustle yep. at the merch table or they keep up to date mm -hmm. with their fans and their community yep. and, 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 you know, mailing lists and all this sort of stuff. And it's things that a lot of businesses pay people a hell of a lot of money. And I tell you what, I've worked with a lot of marketers who get paid yep. shit tons of money. And I tell you what, yep. they wouldn't know how to promote a band whatsoever. They wouldn't know the hustle. Yeah. They don't even put an ounce of effort in compared to what we put put in with our bands. Exactly. So, um, exactly. Yep. Definitely. And if you can capture, if you can capture that skill and capture the passion that someone's got for that and you transfer it, yeah, then that's it. Right. Yeah. That's what you need to do. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So yeah. between now and whenever the hell you guys get this album out and hopefully it's sooner rather than later, you guys, are. Mm going to keep uh you know keep the machine pumping and you're going to put out another mm -hmm. release in between so you mentioned uh 10 year yes. anniversary this year of the first release yes yeah so we're going to do a 10 year anniversary 
just I guess uh, I, it's kind of all based around a vinyl reissue. Hmm. Um, so the the original record of uh, Live Till Death, it was a live album that Desecrator put out in 2011. Um, it featured Riley and and three other guys that were in Desecrator at the time. Um, so I didn't actually play on it at all. However, I, I have always been a big fan of the album. I remember when I first um, got the squeal that Desecrator were looking for a new drummer. I already had the CD and I already had it on my, my iPod. Um, so, um, you know, as, so I heard, I heard that they were looking for a, a, a drummer. I actually was doing, I did a few lessons with Dave Haley at the time and he's the one that told me actually, so bless him for doing that. <laughs> Good um, <laughs> good Dave. Um, but so, so I think what we're doing is, you know, I, I feel very strongly about that album just because of the, you know, just the purity of it. And I think that's why it did so well at the time because it was just, you know, it, it was just pure, raw, rough, and it's just a great thrash, you know, record, you know. So I've always been a big fan of it. I was very, I, you know, I'm lucky enough that I get to play those songs and I really like them. Um, so I was really vibed on the idea of doing it. So we're doing a vinyl reissue of life to death. It didn't get put out on vinyl originally. So we got it remastered for vinyl. Mm. Um, we're going to do a series of interviews with um, the guys that played on it. So uh, Mano and Matt and Luke, who, who were the yeah, original cool. members of Desecrator, we're going to, we're going to do some, some just small video interviews with them. Um, there'll be some merch and things like that. So we'll just kind of churn out that content over the next few months. Um, just to kind of celebrate that, that, that 10 year release. Uh, of, of that release um we, we've already had a bit of a vibe on a vinyl reissue i think riley cheekily kind of put it out on his socials a couple of months back and he he got a really really good response um so he's like oh, okay maybe we should do that um so yeah uh vinyl reissue stack of merch that will go with it um there may or may not be a special show announcement that will come up as well mm. so uh you know keep your ears peeled on that um so that's going to be over the next few months. We've got a few scattered shows that we're going to play as well, um, which will be pretty exciting. And hopefully the the, the, the lockdowns will kind of keep at bay. Um, I'm as, as it is right now, I'm in Melbourne and I'm in the middle of a stage four lockdown. That's mm. lockdown three or something like that at yeah. the moment um, that we're hopefully going to count, come out of. But uh, I guess by the time this, um, this uh, chat goes to where, who knows where we'll be. But... Um, all of that going well. We will be playing in April uh, and May, um, and then yeah, maybe we'll uh, we'll think about this new album. We'll see. So I urge everyone to keep following us and please keep checking in. And uh, yeah, and uh, we'll. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, kind of time to ignite the engine again. Alrighty, guys. Now you know I love a call to action. So here's another call to action. Go to desecrator.net. Go and order the brand new vinyl that's come out from the guys, Live Till Death, the 10-year anniversary, remastered for vinyl release over at desecrator.net. Go, go and grab it. I'm going to have a direct link in the show notes over at andysocial.net and andydowling.net as well. Go and support them. They are the ultimate hustlers. They are the road dogs. These guys just continuously work their asses off to just do what they love doing, uh, releasing music, putting music out there, touring playing live, like just all this stuff. And they're just absolute legends. They're good guys and deserve every bit of success and support from, uh, from metal fans. So get over to desecrated.net, go and grab that, go and follow the guys on the socials, go and follow Jared on the socials and stay up to date with the happenings with that, uh, that little album that they're sitting on, which by the way, I know I mentioned in the, in the episode and I will not give away any details, but I heard one song and man, it is so fucking good. It is really, really fucking good. And I think people are going to be very surprised in a really good way of what they're going to hear when this album eventually comes out. I might be talking it up way too much. Who knows? I am the hype beast. Listen to me. <laughs> it is good. It is really, really good. I'm, I'm really, really pumped and excited. And after talking to Jared and, you know, the, the old chat that we did with Riley, uh, years and years ago, which I'm going to have to get him back on very soon as well for a follow up, but, uh, just pumped to support these guys and get behind them. Cause, uh, yeah, they're, they're well-deserved of, of all that success and, uh, there's big things to come for them. So definitely get behind them and follow them on the socials. All the links will be in and uh, on the show notes, in the show notes of andysocial.net and andydowling.net losing my train of thought. Fucking hell. 
click through on your podcast player. There'll be a bunch of clickable links in there. What else do I usually say? Yeah, all that. Now, speaking of things I usually say, let's get segue into Patreon. Patreon.com slash Andy Dowling. Great way to support the podcast. And I must say, look, let's, I just want, I just want to talk to you right now. You that's listening to this podcast. Now, a question for you. How many episodes of the Andy Social Podcast have you listened to so far? Is it one? Is it this episode? Is this the first episode that you've ever heard of the Andy Social Podcast? If so, welcome. Thank you very much. And hopefully you stick around and hopefully you dig into the back catalog. But if it's not, if it's, uh, you know, if you've listened to more than a couple, maybe 10, 20, 50, maybe you've listened to all 271 episodes over the past five and a half years. If so, you're a legend. Thank you very much. I want you to consider signing up to the one dollar tier on patreon not the five i've got i've got a bunch of other tiers by the way i've got i've got high tiers that get yeah and there's lots of goodies there there's a five there's a ten there's a twenty dollar tier but i'm not here to talk about that i want people to sign up to the one dollar tier i want numbers i want this community i want to build this community up this year and get a a big group of amazing people supporting the podcast to to have people backing me in my corner means the absolute world to me and is such a massive motivator to keep me on track with this podcast, recording all these great chats, putting these episodes out each week and just pumping out just so much stuff and it's so much fun and just the reminder all the time is that there are people on Patreon supporting what I do. So please consider it. It's a buck. It it doesn't get you anything but a warm and fuzzy feeling in your stomach. If you want extra stuff, there are additional tiers there, but just uh, consider joining joining for $1 a month. Dirt freaking cheap. Get amongst it. Patreon.com slash Andy Dowling. I would absolutely love to have you there and I'd love to give you a little shout out on the Patreon podcast and yeah, and give you a shout out on, on here as well. Uh, absolutely. So, uh, well, we've got another episode coming later this week. Uh, episode 272. Who is it? I don't know. I, I, I'm recording this a little bit in advance and I haven't quite worked out the order of these episodes. So there you go. So stay tuned. It'll be... More than likely, either a return guest or another Australian muso, which I'm doing a fuck ton of them at the moment, but I'm loving it. So stay tuned. Until then, take care, folks. Ta-ta. Bye-bye.